Sasa saizi tumeunda serikali ya kila mtu. Hakuna mtu sasa ya kulalamika. Hakuna mtu ya kupingana. Sasa sisi wote tusimame pamoja. Tupangane pamoja. Tuungane, tushirikiane. Ile sasa kazi iko ni vile tutashirikiana tutatue changamoto za taifa letu la Kenya tukiwa pamoja ile kazi iko sasa ni kupanga maendeleo ya taifa letu la Kenya tukiwa pamoja that is the president who was speaking in Aruk uh, yesterday and Geoffrey Ruku um, what is the understanding of the people you represent and what he just said that now tuko kwa serikali kila mtu yuko kwa serikali what does that mean in, in your area? It, it means that uh, Kenya Kwanza uh, lost some grounds. Uh, we have lost about 20, 22-25% of the government. And uh, when Kenya Kwanza administrations were forming the government, had no intention of sharing the government with anyone. But uh, we are in a different situation altogether, where we have shared government with a minority. And this is as a result <coughs> of poor pre <coughs> performance mm -hmm. of uh, maybe the administration, uh, poor communication of the administration, many uh, executive, many ministries not able to communicate uh, properly on what president has been able to achieve with clarity. Uh, but moving forward, we are uh, going to be united with my brothers from uh, minority in championing the interests of Kenyans and ensuring that we oversight the executive or the government uh, to be more proactive, to be more innovative in solving the uh, problem which Kenyans are facing and especially the young people of this nation. Mm -hmm. um, so the government has a huge responsibility to be more responsive, to be more innovative, and to communicate clearly and with precision as far as uh, its programs and projects uh, are concerned. And more importantly, uh, uh, taking this economy into the right trajectory uh, to try to see whether the economy can be able to accommodate the young people who are graduating from different institutions of running and uh, getting jobs, job creation, one of the biggest uh, problem and which um, the previous uh, cabinet was not able to uh, handle it properly. So I think uh, what the president is saying is that uh, at the moment we have an inclusive government mm -hmm. and he's calling it a broad-based uh, government. So with this kind of government, I hope there will be some political stability uh, moving forward, political stability is extremely key, very important in achieving uh, the program which uh, the government has laid uh, down. Um, and uh, we'll be seeing uh, Rai Odinga playing a very key role in the m moving this country uh, uh, forward. And at the same time... W what role will that be for Rai Odinga? Mm. He has uh, very royal members deputy party leaders who have become ministers. Mm -hmm. Joe is a deputy uh, party leader. Former. Uh, mm -hmm. Yeah, former party leader. And also Oparanya um, is a former deputy party leader. So these are, these are very so serious. What if these are very uh, serious. Uh, so, these, sorry. Yeah. Um, the people who showed up at the vetting yes. were those specific names you mentioned. I didn't see Raila Odinga. Yes. Mm -hmm. But what role will he play in this government, in your opinion? Last week I saw the PS uh, Treasury yeah, keep tour, hmm. visiting uh, Capitol Hill uh, to brief or to have a discussion with Ray Ondinga. Mm -hmm. I also saw um, a deputy ambassador visiting uh, Ray Ondinga, Capitol Hill, uh, probably to discuss the issues of diplomacy. Uh, we'll be seeing quite a number of senior government officials visiting Ray Ondinga uh, to brief him on the happening of the government. That means he has a very central role in this government. To do what? To be briefed? <laughs> you never know. In the process of being briefed, you don't know his contribution. You don't know his, uh, his uh, uh, contribution, his uh, discussions, his uh, <coughs> uh, right. uh, wealth uh, of experience in terms of uh, uh, 
you know, guiding these senior government officials? You don't know. So, uh, okay, the I'll, briefing, I'll, I'll, the I'll briefing come back for clarity. But let me first of all hear from Senator Kajuang. Um, what will Raila Odinga be doing in government? But also, does that statement by the president that now everyone is in government does it hold if you had to look at um, the nominees that the country has now? Uh, Sam, Raila Odinga is not in government. Raila Odinga's focus is to be the chair of the Africa Union Commission. He has put in his papers. He's uh, going on the next leg of campaigns. And by February next year, the verdict will be out. And uh, I personally wish him well, and I believe all Kenyans would wish him well because of his commitment and sacrifices and experiences, he's uh, fit for that position. When he becomes the chair of the Africa Union Commission, he'll be playing on a different political terrain. He will no longer be talking about local politics, but continental and even global politics, because the Africa Union Commission is now a member of G20. So his correspondence will be Kamala Harris or, or Donald <coughs> Trump or India Stammer. He'll be in a completely different space. The gentleman who we were with in ODM last week, our deputy party leaders, the chair of ODM, and the leader of the minority party. If they are successfully vetted and approved by the House, they shall take an oath. Part of that oath binds them to be faithful and loyal counselors to the president. Not to Raila Odinga, not to ODM. They'll be counselors tied to the president. Mm -hmm. They will not be taking orders from anybody outside the presidency. That is an oath that all cabinet secretaries take, and you know what you're signing up for. That the minute you agree to become a cabinet secretary, your orders, your directions, uh, your guidance comes from the president. And so we are not talking about ODM. There will be no reporting back structure to ODM to the rank and file. When the president says that everybody is in government, I don't think that is accurate. Government is supposed to be for the people, by the people, and of the people. What we are seeing is a government of elites. The Gen Zs were out on the streets. They were completely dissatisfied with the cabinet that was there previously. Half of it has come back. Another half uh, you know, has been brought from uh, <coughs> perhaps political players, some people who have been sitting in their uh, political benches. Is that a government of the people? Is that a government for the people? And is that a government by the people? That should be the benchmark with which we measure whether this government is truly a government of everybody, like the president was saying. I feel that the political elite has not come to the realization uh, that the cheese has moved. You remember the book, Who Moved My Cheese? We are still playing the same old politics of musical <coughs> chairs, of having <coughs> communities and tribes ganging up against each other. And yet it's so clear that there is a new generation mm -hmm. that forms the greater percentage of Kenya's population that is thinking differently. The way we played politics in the 90s, the way we played politics in the 2000s, might not be the same dispensation that we have. A lot of things have changed. We have educated our children, given them the best education, exposed them to the effects and forces of globalization, and they are able to see what works in other countries. And they ask themselves why it does not work in this country. We are at an, in an era where, even if you look at the American elections, artificial intelligence has become center, and um, it, it can be used for good or bad, for spreading information or for, for uh, spreading misinformation. We have an event on 8th of August this week, mm -hmm. where we are hearing in the social media spaces that we are going to have the mother of all protests on Nani Nani. And you cannot underestimate it, because if you're using the virality of social media and also artificial intelligence, a lot of young people can be moved and they can willingly and voluntarily go out on the streets without being sponsored by anybody. So I think we are still playing the old politics, and yet uh, the country has moved. It will take some miracle for the president to regain the confidence of the public. Right now, he's getting confidence because it appears like uh, uh, the, 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 the minority side is willing to help him get out of the rut. And we are not doing this, some for the love of, it's not for the love of an individual. Mm -hmm. It is for the love of a nation. When Raila Odinga, uh, you know, sat us down and explained that there was need for us to listen and come in and help uh, the government, it was not to help William Ruto, it was to help Kenya. It is about Kenya. 
unfortunately, the president sometimes thinks it's about him. And that's why you still have these unending battles between him and the deputy, which are going to sabotage any effort at, at, at uh, you know, restoration of Kenya. Mm -hmm. Because, you know, we come in with uh, good conscience, we have donated some of our best players, <coughs> and we have said, oh, Paranya, Joe, Mbadi, and you saw how well Mbadi performed in the interviews. We are saying, go and help Ruto to stabilize Kenya. Mm -hmm. And then you go in and you find there's another battle that is uh, starting, a regional battle, an ethnic battle. Same, same old politics, and yet the context has changed. You know, you're saying that um, it will take a miracle for the government to regain trust of the people. How does, how does that work? Even if you've donated part of your best brains to the government, how does that work in the circumstance that you are in, the challenges that you just enumerated, a lot of laws being rendered unconstitutional, a finance bill 2024 not available, finance act 2023 now in a challenge? It's, it's, it's going to be tough even for our best players to perform. Mm -hmm. And uh, one of the most uh, strategic dockets is the national treasury. Of course, this country, in terms of financial planning and economic planning, we've got the overarching vision 2030, and we've got the medium-term medium expenditure frameworks, which are five-year uh, frameworks. We are on MTEF-4, which was launched by President Ruto, I think, uh, last year or this year. Mm -hmm. Cabinet Secretary Mbadi's hands are tied, because there's already a planning framework that has already been approved. There's already the Kenya Kwanzaa approach to economic transformation. You've got uh, David D and some guys sitting somewhere in some shadowy office influencing economic policy and influencing economic plans. And so John Buddy comes in very well-meaning, very publicly spirited, and thinking that money should go to the right sectors. Already those monies have been committed. Mm. The 2024-2025 budget is a done deal, and you can't finance it. We are not sure whether we're going back to the 2022 uh, finance bill. Now, that in itself is going to affect the business terrain of this country because business thrives on predictability and certainty. Today, you've got a business executive who is not sure what tax he's going to pay mm -hmm. because he's not sure they're going back to the 2022 bill or we are dealing with the 2024 or we are dealing with the 2023. People are going to run away. Big business fears uncertainty. Big business wants predictability. <coughs> and it's not just big business, even small business. You should be able to know what you're going to pay in terms of remittances, dues for your employees, what you're going to pay for permits, what you're going to pay to government. So we are in a very shaky situation. Beyond that, Sam, I was talking to a governor from up north, and he told me that the desert locust is back. And we are hoping that it's not going to be as bad as it was a couple of years back. Mm -hmm. Because that would mean that we'd be moving from those, it would be that cycle, that usual cycle of floods, locust, drought, bumper harvest, flood, you know, that has been the cycle. And every time we are hit with those kind of adverse effects, it is estimated that we are losing about 2 to 3 percent of our GDP. So our best players are moving into a field that is already rigged against them. Uh, even if you look at Topio and I going into energy, the energy sector, we've got a 2018 energy policy. We've got a lot of uh, PPPs, uh, power purchase agreements, PPAs that have already been negotiated. Right. We've got a lot of structural problems around some of the utility and service providers. You've got global forces that you have to deal with. And that's why I was saying it is going to take more than appointing star players. Mm -hmm. It's going to take more than uh, getting uh, Messi from ODM to join your team for your team to perform well. Above all, the problem of the Kenya Kwanzaa regime has been a problem of leadership. And that leadership is the top leadership with the people from the lake, we say fish rots from the head. When the public is outraged about the cabinet secretaries as they were, by extension, they are pointing fingers at the presidency. Mm -hmm. We have a president that is uh, very domineering and you will find that he has an opinion on every subject matter, even issues that should be dealt with by cabinet secretaries. He has been very articulate on the housing. He has been very articulate on, uh, on, on, so on health. He has been very articulate on manufacturing to an extent that the cabinet secretaries become inv invisible. If then there's a failure on the part of the cabinet secretaries, it is a failure that must be shared by the presidency. The 2027 election, Sam, is going to be interesting. But we are hoping that on 8th of August, which is this year, this country is not going to break because you underestimated the, the, the anger Right. Uh, which led to the invasion of parliament. 
and uh, which I think I saw Ruku ducking and, and, and uh, hiding somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, Despite this, this, this the bravado with which he was defending the vehicle tax. On, the <laughs> <laughs> on that day, it, it was, it, the bravado went. Because we underestimated the anger. We yeah. thought that uh, we could uh, go get away with impunity. And, um, uh, you know, we, we have always thought that politicians okay. know everything. Uh, 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 I want to give you the right of reply. But as you do that, there's something you said that... Um, the previous cabinet was unable to communicate, it was not responsive, and they failed in creating jobs. You think with the new team this would be possible? Uh, some we have seen uh, a lot of misinformation and disinformation mm -hmm. uh, within uh, the social media. Mm -hmm. Misinformation and disinformation on what the government is doing and what uh, the parliament is doing. For instance, uh, the finance bill 2024, um, there was an issue of rand, which was not part of uh, the finance bill. Uh, and many, many Kenyans believe that uh, the, the, rand, the rand annual um, tax is part of uh, finance, finance bill 2024 uh -huh. and you could not be able to uh, explain otherwise wh which is which which is misinformation uh, as, as senator said uh, correctly that we are in era of ai and a lot of information which is not factual uh, may be spreading across uh, the country across the continent um, and the consumption of this information may affect uh, the support which is necessary uh, for the government to implement its, its uh, program and policies. So the new cabinet, uh, if it is not going to communicate effectively on what the uh, doing on a day-to-day -day basis, still they will not get out of the woods. So uh, what, does it, what does it take to communicate effectively? Uh, for instance, when Badi was being uh, in interviewed or threatened, he said uh, at Treasury there is a media uh, room which has never been used, which we, we, we many Kenyans don't know whether we have such a platform uh, within uh, Treasury. So, and I know every ministry has a communication department. We need to communicate. We need to tell Kenyans exactly what you're doing. Our constitution, the centrality of our constitution is public public participation mm -hmm. public participation you know involving the public on decisions which we are taking on the program which you are implementing we have not seen that happening in uh, previous with the previous cabinet okay. uh, more often um, so this is something which must be at the center of the new uh, cabinet because we have seen a population, <coughs> a JNC population which is so informed, which want to participate on a day to day basis on what uh, the affairs of the country. So they need to get factual information, and the factual information can only come from the executive, the people who are doing the, uh, okay. uh, the functions of government. Uh, oh, we, oh, the politicians. Oh, 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 um, let me hear from the communicator himself here. Um, <laughs> so, do you change the cabinet members or do you change the communication units? Uh, if the problem is communication. Sam, I don't think there is a communication problem. Mm -hmm. I think one of the things you would notice um, uh, in the debate leading, us, leading up to the finance bill mm -hmm. was the Kenyan public were well informed and they knew exactly what they didn't want. And I think now there is a, uh, uh, there's a problem in the sense that uh, people are trying to, there's this blame game, that there was no enough communication, the, there was no public participation, uh, but there's a policy failure. Mm -hmm. The problem of Kenya today is that uh, our policy, the government policies have failed because uh, there isn't a very serious engagement on policy mm -hmm. other than what has come from outside. Uh, and the current policy, uh, many people believe, is led by the IMF, by foreign um, uh, economic uh, forces. Mm -hmm. uh, Kenya has been dictated. They have been told, this is what you need to do to get IMF support. And this whole idea of depending uh, on international assistance, international intervention uh, for economic uh, uh, policies, uh, poli uh, economic uh, uh, problems, Mm -hmm. is one of the failures of uh, our system. So information might, might be used as an argument, but if information is not going to fix uh, bad policies. And we need uh, uh, a new approach, 
uh, to how we deal with uh, our economics because our economy is based on borrowing, uh, indebtedness. It's not an economy based on growth and development. And the reason why we have problems uh, uh, every four or five years is because we're not able to generate uh, uh, enough employment for our youth. Mm -hmm. it's not, we're not um, able to grow our economy. Uh, and there is a dissatisfaction. And unless we can get a government which is focused on uh, real, effective policies that uh, would change the reality of that, right. uh, we're going to continue to be beggars. The other thing is uh, uh, also the, I wanted to comment, is, is the democratic representation. Mm -hmm. Here people are talking about minority. I see Roku is talking about minority. The total number of people who registered to vote in the 22 elections were 22.1 million. Mm -hmm. The people who eventually voted uh, were only 14 million. Seven million did not, oh, people who have registered as voters, never bother to turn up uh, uh, for the elections. And there's another four or five million people who didn't even register for elections. Right. So although we have um, a democratic system, uh, democracy is not just about elections. It is more than that. It's not the act of holding elections. Uh, democracies, a, a robust democracy, uh, democracy mm -hmm. uh, requires to be uh, renewed every day through public participation, <coughs> right. to, through public engagement. And um, uh, taking up on the joke that uh, Moshima Kajuang did about uh, Ruku, is that there were these colleagues of ours in parliament. Mm -hmm. They clearly knew that the finance bill was not accepted by the Kenyan people. There was uh, there was an outrage against it mm -hmm. everywhere. And yet they went ahead and passed it. And some few minutes uh, when Parliament was uh, invaded, uh, was attacked, uh, they were the first people to run around like, uh, they, uh, like rats, screaming uh, uh, and not knowing the consequences of what they just did. So the Kenyan people were fed up and the Gen Z's came up uh, to push uh, uh, to push uh, forward uh, to a point where in fact we reached a crisis and I think the only way we can come out of that crisis uh, is, is changing our policies, uh, our political policies, uh, our economic policies because at the moment what the president has done is to do a political somersault uh, to be able to fix, uh, to do a quick fix uh, to keep this uh, ship from sinking. Uh, but it requires much uh, more. Uh, does it work to the end? This is the, this is what uh, everybody is looking at uh, to see how it uh, pans out. Okay, it's a temporary thing, mm. and three years for, for for heaven's sake is not enough to turn things around economically. Uh, mm. And the, someone, however brilliant they may may be, like uh, uh, John Bundy, is not going to be able to do much. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he he would be trapped in that uh, uh, situation. All right. Three years would go very quickly. Right. The question is, what is the long-term vision of this country? How can we take this country out of this um, perennial crisis every four or five years? Uh, we need to fix our economy. And unless we can fix our economy and have um, a, a robust uh, democratic system, uh, we would continue to have these cycles every four or five years. Okay. 